At the age of 16, Richard Schultz was diagnosed with valvular deformities of the heart. The doctors told him that he was born with these deformities and that as an adult, this heart would not be able to pump enough blood and he'd probably die at the age of 20. Because of these valves, the chambers would fill up the wrong time. So obviously they tried to scare him into get an operation. So it worked, they scared him. At the age of 17, he was in the hospital waiting to be uh, operated on, sharing a room with another 17 year old young man with the same identical condition, same age and everything. Fortunately for Schultz and unfortunately for the other gentleman, the other kid was scheduled first, died on the operating table. As you can imagine, Schultz said, uh, now wait a second, um, when we're 17, 20, uh, I might want to gamble, see if I can find something else on my own. He, d he found something on his own. And what he found was raw food and juice fasting and herbs, especially herbs like hawthorn berries that allow our heart to survive on less blood and oxygen. Of course, now he has no deformities at all. So was he really born with those deformities? Needless to say, I like Richard Schultz quite a bit, especially since he understands the power of juice fasting. When I first found out about him, I read several articles on his experience doing juice fast. And he said, when I did my first 30 day juice fast, no one told me how powerful this was. But then when I did my first 60 day juice fast, that's when I realized that this is the solution for everything, virtually everything. What do you do for heart disease? Juice fast. What do you do for diabetes? Juice fast. Arthritis? Juice fast. Just about every disease has to do with our bathrooms being dirty. The solid food vacation on juices is the best way to clean those. Keep it in mind that we're all unique and different and some may need to go to more fruit because they're more cleansing. Some may need to go to more vegetables because they're more building and some people's adrenals might not be able to handle the juices, the fruits that is. And it's the best way, my friends, to, con to overcome and take back control over things that are controlling us, our food choices. So I remember reading Schultz and he was saying, when you do a juice fast, one of the first things it does when you take a solid food vacation, it relieves all that pressure in your chest. That in itself provides a tremendous amount of relief for lots of people. I just published a video this morning. Didn't mean to publish it, I just <laughs> monetized it. And for some reason they decide or asked for a review actually. They're asking a re they're they're, uh, they're flagging every one of my videos now on YouTube, just about. Oh, yeah, almost every one of them, no matter what it is, they say, oh, we got to review it. So uh, I requested a review before I even published it, and then that made them, for some reason, publish it. They didn't do it the day before. But the point I was getting at is I just uploaded or published a video this morning uh, of Dr. Baxter Montgomery, one of my best students, who is ex sharing his experience with one of his patients that had thrombosis. 60 day juice fast, it's gone. As Richard Schultz would say, this is the for the miracles. Now, Schultz has a really good 600 page book on the incurables uh, and uh, 11 hour or nine hour video series that complements it. Uh, he also has a really short little book. There, is a, there are no incurable diseases or something to that effect. A real short little 100 page book. Really condensed, a lot of good information in it. And of course he understands the importance of herbs and it was Schultz that I remember him saying about how they've been trying to control the herb industry for a long time and regulate it and they really can't because it's not doing the harm that the other industry is doing with their poisons. These aren't poisons, no one's dying from them. But because they couldn't regulate them, they said, well, we'll just buy them up and then produce a bad product so you'll come back to the other poisons. They're poisons. Not saying that the herbs are poisons, 
Although some people look at it as such, some people don't study it well enough like natural hygienists and they poo-poo herbs thinking that they're suppressing symptoms and that's just absurd and shows their ignorance because there are many functions, like 34 applications are, are, are functions of herbs. Or it's actually three main functions, but you can use it for 34 different things and not one of them is suppressing anything. So it's not accurate to, to, to bad mouth herbs that way and the reason why these natural hygienists do it is because the herbs belong to the art in most cases. Although there are food herbs which really aren't really in that category anymore. They're actually supplying one of our needs. Uh, but otherwise, when you look at herbs, that's the art. And the natural hygienists are going, no, you gotta look at the science. You gotta satisfy those needs. And a lot of herbalists don't understand the right diet. A lot of people don't understand the right diet. Every time you turn around, someone else is saying, I've got the ideal diet. And remember there's five main mistakes we make. Someone said, hey, you should check this out. Let's discuss it. I don't, don't need to discuss it. They're already making two of the mistakes. They're still eating plants. They're not biologically adapted to eat, and they're still cooking their food. Five things we've got to correct, and the best we can do, it's all we can ask for. Do you have to be perfect? I don't know. I wish I knew. But it only makes sense to me that if you're an animal out in the wild, you're a part of a herd, and you came into a pa couple pastures, and one was obviously superior and the other was obviously inferior, altered somehow. I wouldn't waste my time in that other pasture. This is how I looked at it long ago. I thought about how we, we're building a body every day. Can't step in the same body twice like you can't step in the same river twice because every day we're building brand new cells. You wake up, you got brand new cells all over the place. So what do you want to build your body out of? Think of it like building a house and you had to use some bricks. Now, are you going to choose the $5 bricks or the $5,000 bricks? Assuming that there is actually a difference in quality based on the price. I don't know about you, but I don't want those $5 bricks. It doesn't make sense. The problem here, of course, is a difference in short-term versus long-term mentality. And unfortunately, short-term pleasures usually Oh, uh, usually win over long-term plans of the our long-term pain that we'll get if we don't change. And of course, the biggest problem is most people don't know that there's going to be long-term pain from that short-term pleasure, unless they're doing something obvious that they know is bad. And there's a lot of things that fall in that category, aren't there? And that's why I say we always go, got to go back to the first cause. One of the main reasons, if not the only reason maybe, that so many people turn to the wrong food or sex or drugs or money or relationships to try to fill the void in their life is because what they're really missing are biophotons. And then when we address that issue, that, that issue individually, we bump up our own biophotons, we still suffer because the rest of your species, most of them, are still disconnected. And I've talked about this before, hypoheliosis A and hypoheliosis B. Hypoheliosis is an abnormally low biophoton level. Biophotons are the sunlight energy that we store in the nucleus of our cells. It's how our cells communicate. It's our sixth sense. It's plain and simple. We destroyed that with the very first of those five mistakes we made. So when people say, oh, they got the ideal diet, but they're still cooking their food, that's not an ideal diet. They'll still, they'll they're all eating plants that you have to cook to eat them because there's anti-nutrients in it. That's obviously not our ideal diet. How can you include a food that has anti-nutrients in it that you cannot eat unless you alter it and kill those anti-nutrients? And what do you think it's going to do to all the other things in the food? It's called denial when you even entertain that that's an ideal diet. And maybe for some, just ignorance. The problem that we all have is that we can improve on our diet and all of a sudden our problems go away and think we found the ideal diet. You know what? I was making five mistakes. I quit making three of them. My cancer went away. It's the ideal diet. <laughs> and sometimes they could have been the paleo people and they too corrected three mistakes and still making two and they still saw a reversal of a lot of their conditions. If the ideal cannot be achieved, it is still worth describing as a standard to aim at. Socrates. 
I know how hard it is to let go of the way we've lived all of our lives. It's part of who we are. To change our diet is tantamount to killing part of who we are. If every day of your life for five or six decades you've been eating the same breakfast that takes you back to how you started that journey with your mom and she's no longer around, but you find comfort every time you make that breakfast the same way your mom made it for you. It tastes the same way. It's a whole lot more than just the food, the pleasure of the food. There's the fact that it's who we are. But we got to realize what we are isn't that good. And we got to figure out how to build a better body. So every day you wake up, do the best you can. Don't beat up yourself if you can't do it. And remember, if you're brand new to this, it may take you five years to finally get to a place where you're saying, okay, I'm, this is as far as I'm going, or I finally made it, or whatever. Some of y'all may never be able to let go of quite a few different things. And I'm not even saying that's a bad thing. If once a year you you make a special dish which reminds you of a happy time in your life and that's the only time you do it. There can't be anything wrong with that unless it pulls you back to where you were. Now, I was lucky. I had to stop eating the wrong food because my body was damaged to a point where every time I ate it, it filled me back up. And had I not analyzed everything to the nth degree, I might not have figured that out. I'm sure I never did. In fact, George Malcolmus and um, Paul Bragg never figured it out because the same thing happened to all three of us. When we experimented, I experimented, they went back, period, where they went back to eating 80% uh, raw and 20% cooked. Both those guys seven, gained 17 pounds just like I did when I did a 30-day experiment. I knew what was happening. I knew my intestines were, were, were damaged, and every time I ate the wrong food, it plugged them up. So I said, well, let's go on a 30-day experiment, try 20% cooked, see if it does anything wrong to me or bad to me. And it did. I gained weight. I gained 17 pounds in the first 20 days. Just like Paul Bragg gained 17 pounds when he went back to an 80% raw or 20% cooked diet. And George Malcolmus, they both identically gained 17 pounds. It kind of made me scratch my head thinking, what's going on? How can that be? Is it because the coal is the same size? Or maybe it's because we're all about the same age when it happened. We're all in our early 40s. So I think that was a common denominator plus the, all the other factors. But we have to realize we're all unique. We've all come damaged, maybe with birth defects that can be repaired. We don't know. Were they properly diagnosed? All we know, folks, is the system we have right now is not working. And many times that may take a person two or three decades before they figure that out. That's a, lot of, uh, that's a lot of needless suffering. And I can't help but think that everybody who's that, who has that much experience with the system that's not working and everything's getting worse would be open to a better way, especially when it has the potential to be the most exciting experience they ever had in their life. It was for me. It was exciting to crawl out of a rut I didn't know I was in. It was exciting to see a 20-pound cesspool leave my body. Nothing in my life compares to, to, to that experience. And I'm sure there are a lot of people that are saying, well, no, wait a second. <laughs> I gave birth to that serpent, but I also gave birth to a little Martha, and that was a little more exciting. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine it would be. But I remember when I finally started getting rid of that demon inside of me. At least that's what they called it in the, the scene gospel of peace. Beelzebub. <laughs> when they got rid of Beelzebub, the serpent, it was exciting. And I can guarantee you, my friends, if you can find the courage to do this, if you haven't done so yet, if you're having heart problems, joint problems, any other kind of problems, if you want to change that, start with a solid food vacation. And I can guarantee you, you're in for a treat.